this is uh, part two of my presentation on uh, dreams, it's the I Ching, sand play, and the psychoanalytic process. So the dreams that I'll present tonight are from the, the most complex and informative series of any dreams I've worked with in my 39 years as a Jungian analyst, partly because of the intimate interweaving of hexagrams from the I Ching with intricate dream material. The dreams illustrate how structured the psyche can be and how it can express itself through concepts in a book associated with the essence of Chinese culture and philosophy as expressed in the most abstract forms, form as the archetype of number and the binary code of the I Ching. So I don't expect anyone to follow this completely upon first hearing. But this presentation is being recorded and will be available to those interested in a closer examination of the material. Eventually, I hope to publish the dream series in detail in a book, but I'm not sure if and when that will happen. I present these dreams to honor China for the gift of the I Ching to the world, demonstrating the universal nation, uh, nature of the wisdom the I Ching con contains. My analysand is a successful liberal arts college professor with a broad background in both the sciences and the humanities. He began to read Jung at age 17, that was in the 1960s, and started to use the I Ching shortly thereafter. He entered his third round of analysis with me at the age of 57 with the intent of going deeper into the analytic process um, and in his relationship to the personal and archetypal feminine. He was transiting to an elder position in the university and wrestling with a huge conflict in his personal and professional life between a physical, sensual eros and a very spiritual eros with all the complexities of doing that in American Christian culture and intellectual university life. This man had an amazing ability to recall dreams, often bringing in page-long, single-spaced, typed dreams. He was on sabbatical for a year and devoted considerable time to his analytic work, including active imagination, which he was gifted at doing, and meditation. The first dream Dave, and I'll call him Dave, that's not his real name, uh, brought in for the first round of analysis involved him pressing his face into a spherical cactus enclosing a scorpion. We related this to his struggles with his male sexual energy that began at puberty and the hell and damnation ser uh, sermons of the conservative Christian church he attended as a child. The astrological sign of Scorpio is associated with sex and death. Dave summarized his first round of analysis as dealing primarily with male sexual energy, which set the stage for him to remarry. The second round of analysis about 18 years later dealt with feminine energy and releasing his blocked creative energy. The two-year analysis was followed up by a one-and-a-half-year analysis five years later, and that is what I will be talking about today. Several dreams set the framework and constitute, uh, context for his third round of analysis, including an initial dream of an Asclepian temple of healing near the sea with four pillars carved with wavy vertical lines holding up the roof. The nearly square support stab, a slab had a round hole and a square hole in it, which can be associated with the geometric symbols for hexagram one and two in the I Ching, respectively. Three weeks into the analysis, he was given a map uh, in a dream of his dreamscape with significant dream figures and locations oriented by the directions and Jungian psychological types. This map became the framework for the rest of, of the analysis extending over the next year, the next year and a half. 
This is a simplified form of the map showing mountains associated with his home state, lightning, and the temple of Asclepius in the west, most images and associations carrying over from our previous analytic work. Soon after, Dave dreamt of a journey south to a place where an angel was to receive his wings. The angel is hobbled with a twisted back. A voice says, you must be burned, understood as being the process for attaching the wings. The group enters a cave after they started to descend the hill with the temple of Asclepius on a cliff in the west. A tunnel leads to the chamber of black gold light, resembling a laboratory or an operating theater. Male figures, angels, wise men, and various sorts of scientists are working with a stone that has something to do with attaching the wings. The black stone is under tremendous pressure, causing deep yellow and red light to emerge. Four ideas arise over what to do with the stone, each associated with a direction and a psychological function. The first thought associated with the North and thought, the intellect, is that is to be given to Our Lady of Tears. The second, West associated with a sensation, is that it is a small light in the vast darkness in the painting of the Louvre, in which Jesus appears in a small circle of light toward the lower left-hand corner of a vast canvas filled with scenes of sin and chaos. And that there's that figure of Jesus, that small little figure, and the rest is about the crucifixion and sin and chaos. Let me, okay, so here we are. Um, the image uh, alters with, it, with each breath. On the intake, Jesus is holding the stone, which is also the Tao. On the exhale, the Tao expands to form the globe of light surrounding Jesus. In this image, we have a merging of Christianity of the West with Taoism of China. This slide here shows Kampi's mystery of the passion and the resurrection of ascension of Christ. And I said, note that small Jesus figure on the left. Dave forgot about the crucifixion image on the right. The little figure of Jesus will have to go through all the pain and suffering depicted in the painting to get to the transcendent re resurrected Jesus in the upper right. That's this part, and there's Jesus in the center. But we will see in Dave's last dream that instead the psyche put him on a path down into Lao Tzu's deep enigma source. The third idea is, uh, that's connected with the south and emotion, is that the stone should be placed inside the skull of the desk in St. Jerome's study. St. Jerome is the patron saint of librarians, which would be associated with thinking and sensation, organization of a mass of details. The fourth idea, is that it is to be left in silence. This is to be accomplished by making a small fleck with a knife on the surface of the dark, uh, the black red part of Monet's water lily canvas and letting it sink beneath the water. And you can see the black red uh, parts beneath the water lilies of the Monet painting. The stone under tremendous pressure can clearly be related to the alchemist stone that the builders rejected. One of the many metaphors for the alchemical process was to convert lead into gold, psychologically and spiritually describing, described as transmuting something base and heavy in our psyche into something of ultimate value like gold. Another powerful and highly symbolic dream followed that and it added more complexity to the psychic roadmap for Dave's analytic process. In the second part of a dream Dave had the next night, he is standing in a line with a group of non-affluent, multicultural people led, quote, outside onto a street in a scruffy urban neighborhood. Our Lady of Tears, a woman in her 20s or 30s with dark hair tied back under a blue scarf, 
is sitting at a card table in a driveway. The stone is on the table. The woman places her hand gently on it and her fingers enter its interior. The interior is at once a heart, coral reef, and the interior of a brain. Her fingers pass into the capillaries of the heart and the neural networks. She is seeking out memories and massaging the damage in rhythm with the inhale and exhale of the breath. A couple of street people stop to watch. The massage opens new patterns in the neurons and causes the coral to change color. Her fingers can reach all the secret rooms. One of the on-lake lookers takes a cloth, yellow with red and blue embroidery, and covers her hands and the stone. The stone is then carried down, down a hallway to a chapel at the monastery where it will undergo the second stage of the process. End of quote, end of dream. So the Christian monastery in the mountains of the dreamer's home state is a favorite meditation retreat for him. Note that Our Lady of Tears, to whom all subsequent prayers will be addressed, is associated with the North intellect, bringing compassion to that realm for the dreamer. She works simultaneously on the head, heart, and coral reef, which is the life-rich zone between land and the ocean depths the depths of the collective unconscious. Like with Jesus, the healing, the healing rhythm is inhaling and exhaling. Think meditation here. Note that there's a connection between the inner, the psychic, and the environment, that coral reef. So Our Lady of Tears is a level four anima on dreams schema of anima development, the highest development of the anima. It is wisdom transcending even the most holy and most pure, an example of level three being that of the Virgin Mary. Prime examples of level four are Sophia, the goddess of wisdom in the Old Testament, and here depicted the Mona Lisa by uh, Leonardo da Vinci, and Leonard Cohen's uh, 1966 song, Suzanne. At its deepest level, the anima is a function of the self, the ultimate value other with a capital O, that men would climb the highest mountain for and swim the deepest ocean. It is the face of the soul for a man. The night after the last dream, Dave dreamt of the stone being on the altar of the monastery retreat. A man is using a white hot flame to sketch or burn globe patterns, not of the physical world, onto the surface. The patterns have something to do with Thomas Merton's journey, whom Dave loves, and Dante. A mistake is made when the instrument slips and burns a hole through the surface, revealing a material like a viscous sponge. Merton was a Catholic mystic who incorporated Buddhism late in his life, Dante's Inferno is a Renaissance classic describing with uh, the levels of sin on a journey through hell. We might say of the dream that the process is harmed by using excessive yang energy in attempting to reach wholeness symbolized by the globe. Six days later, Dave dreamt of an awareness of the connection between grace and hexagram the well, number 48. The dream locale was the west end of a main street in his hometown. We'll call it West State Avenue. A street he associated with the bars um, his high school band played in. He grew up in a military town with soldiers going to or returning from Vietnam in the late 60s. There were many prostitutes, uh, quote, women being used by young males, unquote. Dave said, uh, Dave said he could relate to them, the shadow side. Uh, we are dealing with Ares and Aphrodite here from Greek mythology, war, death, and sex, Scorpio energy. Uh, Dave had had a dream about a lost child, the son of a prostitute, and an undercover male cop that started out with a Mona Lisa face who was looking 
for his origins. In the second part of the dream, he associates the well hexagram with the stone and the cross in the West. We might say of this, when things get overheated in the realm of arrows associated with sensation, the West on the diagram of his psyche, uh, he can feel like he's being crucified. He dreamt this. I'm on the Western part of the State Avenue and come to a doorway where Jesus is sitting on an old milk crate. In his hand, he holds a sphere, which is at once a rubber ball and the Tao. There's a woman nearby who, like Jesus, is dressed in scruffy clothes. I think she may be Mary Magdalene. As I look at the ball, I am aware of the lines of the well hexagram um, is associated with one of the women I have known in ascending order uh, from my first sexual encounter to the top line. The hexagram as a whole is associated with my wife. I am to meditate on each of the lines to discover which of them are changing. As I am thinking this, Jesus and Mary Magdalene walk toward the southeast, southwest. We arrive at the cactus, which has been transplanted from the southeast. Jesus, whose walk feels a bit mechanical, not quite fluid, holds the ball up to the globe of the cactus, demonstrating that the ball, the dowel, and the cactus and the stone are the same shape. When he brings it away, there is dried blood on it, which I know is left when I press my face into the cactus. We return to the chamber in the west where the stone is on the table. Mary Magdalene takes the instrument and delicately, delicately engraves the hexagram of the well on the outside of the stone. Eventually, there will be four hexagrams engraved on the outside. End of dream. This slide schematically shows the moving of the scorpion cactus within the psychic landscape. Mary Magdalene is the prostitute who was forgiven and defended by Jesus. When one has touched deep, painful memories in the analytic process, to be in the Tao, to be in the moment, is to fully engage that pain. Dave said in the session following our work with this dream, he was getting back to Taoism and the I Ching after a recent long venture into Christianity. The relationship between the hexagrams grace and the well encapsulates the analytic work. It's the relationship between form and process, the analytic work and life, the alchemist library and the alchemist lab, and Jung saying that enlightenment is not imagining figures of light, but bringing as much light as possible into the unconscious. Grace, hexagram 22, is described in the Wilhelm translation as clarity within, calm without. This is derived from the compositional trigrams. The upper trigram, the upper three lines, um, is keeping still the mountain, which is over the trigram for fire, brightness, and clarity. Grace is about the beauty of form, which the Jing says, quote, is necessary in any union if it is to be well-ordered and pleasing rather than disordered and chaotic. It is about the tranquility of pure contemplation, end of quote. This would relate to Dave's strong thinking function in the North, thinking function in theory associated with academia. It could also be that a symbolic and intellectual understanding of the analytic process is not the same as experiencing the pain and sorrow of working through the psychological material. Wilhelm comments, important questions require greater earnestness. The greater earnestness that is required than what is in hexagram 22 is certainly seen with the well. Notice that the lower trigram is associated with the gentle, wind, and wood, whereas the upper trigram is associated with the abysmal water. We can think of this as a woody plant growing and gently penetrating the abysmal, the water, emotional streams in our lives, extremes in our lives. 
This is Our Lady of Tears gently massaging the brain, heart, and coral reef in the ocean water. The uh, well is associated with the waters of the collective unconscious that births and sustains us all. Wilhelm's commentary on the well notes that for an individual, quote, the foundations of human nature are the same in everyone, end of quote, archetypal in other words. Everyone can draw upon the inexhaustible wellspring of the divine in man's nature. Uh, that's a quote from Wilhelm. And Dave's anima as Our Lady is helping Dave tap that well. The Jing warns of two dangers. The vessel may not go down uh, far enough to get water to penetrate to the roots of things, or it may be brought up too quickly and break the container. This is certainly a case for a Jungian depth psychological approach to the unconscious. Jung realized how crazy the depths can get during his confrontation with the unconscious, as he called it. A good analytic container is needed to go down to the depths, and especially with intense cases, finding the right pace for analysis is crucial. The hexagram, the well, provided a framework and container for our analytic work and a guide for Dave's active imagination with each of the six most significant female relationships in his life. Remember that the well is not the water itself, but a man-made means of extracting the water from the hidden sources related to Jung's definition of enlightenment, which is bringing as much light as possible into the unconscious. A very complex and structured series of dreams followed over the next year of analytic work that I do not have time to go into in depth, but here are highlights as related to the I Ching. Nine days after the Mary Magdalene dream and three months into the analysis, Dave had another structural dream. He walks into the pit associated with his second cycle of, uh, of analysis. St. Jerome will be the guide in a section located in the west wall of the pit. It is the terrace of cages consisting of four niches, each niche connected with one of the hexagrams on the stone associated with attaching the angel's wings. The first niche is a painting of a sad looking Friedrich Nietzsche, Nietzsche sitting on a stone bench with two naked female figures standing behind him. Nietzsche holds a slice of a geode deep yellow with circles of red and brown. It is a slice of time that includes a scene from his first girlfriend that he associated with sexual humiliation. Three weeks after the Mary Magdalene dream, he dreamt of entering the picture of Nietzsche, of Nietzsche in the niche. His first wife, associated with the second line in the hexagram of the well, is lying in a forest clearing behind Nietzsche. There is a broken agate in front of her, the yellow and back, black pieces reminding Dave of a tiger's eye gem. He cuts his fingers as he begins to pick up the sharp pieces, each piece containing, quote, a different fragment of memory of her. So five nights later, a dream segment included, quote, a bunch of people in white coats, like the scientist in the 1950s commercial. They're working with a set of texts involving the interpretation of the lines from the well hexagram, uh, end of quote. The tiger eye agate, agate became a light, light motif in many subsequent dreams of encountering all six women associated with the six lines in the well hexagram and encountered in St. Jerome's first and second niches. In dreams, he came to realize that the tiger eye agate uh, pictured here, is made of very, very thin mica-like layers that he could look at one by one without cutting himself. Within an alchemical vessel, which appeared in his dreams in many forms, Dave realized it, quote, is possible to work on the process 
which will put the agate back together, end of quote. The scientist hexagram dream included a frightening male initiation type experience in an agate Dave associated with his first wife, line two of the well. Dave then felt the presence of Our Lady of Tears. He realized he could, quote, relax and let her fingers massage the neural pathways in my psyche. I am also aware that she's touching memories, but finding the places, she's not touching memories, but finding the places where the chemicals and hormones fix the memories are released. Her fingers release the chemicals, which then enter the bloodstream and flow to the places in the body where the memories are locked up. I follow my breath through the body, opening to the, the energies, end of quote. Of note in the dream is the relationship between the feminine neurobiology and neurochemistry and breathwork to deal with painful memories as they are experienced in the body. Recall Jesus and Our Lady inhaling and exhaling in earlier dreams. Jesus was associated with the stone and the Tao, and Our Lady was associated with the rhythm for massaging the brain, heart, coral. Dave was developing the ability to, look, to both look at with some objectivity and feel into the micro moments of memories as stored in the psyche soma, using both imaginal feminine energy and conceptual approaches. The scientists trying to come up with a written description of a hexagram. The breath work provided the substrate, helping generate the physiological changes that enable the memories discovered and engaged. Here is a schematic diagram of St. Jerome's Terrace of Cages in the west wall of the pit. We are dealing now with the first niche in the west wall of the pit. You can see uh, Nietzsche with two women, the slice of the geode, hexagram 48, the well, his first girlfriend, line one of the well, and his first wife, line two of the well. That's all in the west part. Okay, five weeks after entering that niche in the west wall, Dave dreams that he's watching, walking away from it with St. Jerome, who hands him a piece of agate to carry as a sort of talisman. Quote, he tells me that the stone used to attach the angel's wing that will have four hexagrams engaged on it, engraved on it, has been placed inside the skull on his desk. When I reach the south, it will be cracked open and released, end of quote. As Dave enters the southwest, the transition zone between the realms of sensation and of feeling, he sees niche two holding four images, each an element to be added to the alchemical vessel. They are the ocean, the black rock, the temple of Asclepius, um, and the cactus with the scorpion at the center. I am to cast a hexagram to serve as a guiding presence for this stage of the process. And that hexagram turned out to be Liberation 40 Deliverance in Wilhelm with the top line changing. When I reach the black rock, I will meet my guide for the next stage of the process. The black rock referred to a recent dream of trying to swim out to a large, black, impenetrable rock sticking out of the ocean and not being sure if he could make it back because of the strong undertow. The hexagram deliverance, the trigram of uh, arousing thunder, is over the trigram, the lower three lines, the abysmal water. The energy is beginning to move out of the sphere of danger, just as a thunderstorm clears the air of tensions. Wilhelm says, quote, just as rain relieves atmospheric tension, making all the buds burst open, so a time of deliverance from burdensome pressure has a liberating and stimulating effect on life, end of quote. The Jing counsels to use clarity to forgive deeds and return to normal as soon as possible. The Wing translation of the Yi Jing of that top line says one can finally dispense with the emotional ruts 
of resentments of former times, resulting in increased energy and clarity for dealing with the outer world. So uh, Vivi, you might add a reminder that uh, these two hexagrams, and I'll show the next one shortly, uh, are hexagrams he got when he was told in his dream to ask the Yi Jing for guidance on how to go from, from that uh, west niche to the south niche um, in, uh, in that cave. So, so the Yi Jing, uh, so his dreams are telling him to consult the Jing for advice on how to get from the west to the south. So the hexagram for the future extends this theme. Uh, hexagram uh, 64, before completion, has the clinging fire uh, as the upper trigram and the abysmal water as the lower. Uh, Wilhelm uh, writes, the hexagram indicates a time. Whoops, I don't think I need that one yet. Uh, indicates a time um, when the transition from disorder to order is not yet accomplished. The change is indeed prepared for. This hexagram presents a parallel to spring, which leads out of winter stagnation into the fruitful time of summer. The conditions are difficult. The task is great and full of responsibility but it is a task that promises success because there is a goal that can unite the forces now tending in different directions. At first, however, one must move warily. If we wish to have an effect, we must first investigate the nature of the forces in question and ascertain their proper place. But in order to handle exterior forces properly, we must above all arrive at the correction, the correct standpoint ourselves, for only then can this vantage, uh, from this vantage can the work, uh, can we work correctly? End of quote from Wilhelm. So powerful emotional forces occurring the week after this last dream led to him awakening from a dream, quote, in an intensely agitated state. He slipped back into a half sleep where he stood in silence with Prospero for hours on a rock in the ocean, quote, feeling the ice in my body, watching thoughts pass as they were being battered by a hard rain of half frozen prayers, end of quote. Prospero is the central figure in one of Shakespeare's plays, The Tempest. He relinquishes his power as an alchemist and releases his hold over the thonic Caliban and the ethereal Ariel. The opposites are brought together in the marriage of his daughter, whom he had isolated from the world. So Vivi, just add that, remember, this is an English professor we're talking about, and Shakespeare is you know, one of the, 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 the central images in, uh, in archetypal writers in the West. So over the next five days, he dreamt of an unsuccessful attempt to connect with his first girlfriend and then of a violent clash between two men. He awoke from the second dream, quote, with an intense awareness of the energy in my body, especially in my arms, thighs, and around the heart chakra. I opened myself to the fingers of Our Lady of Tears, feeling her fingers massaging my brain in the places that map the energy of my body, gradually the energy subsides. Is this man in this intense process with very difficult material was told in his dream to consult the Yi Jing and to get advice like this, which seems to recognize the difficulties he's dealing with, but also the encouragement that it gives him. So just think of this coming from some source that we in the West have no way of describing, but is, is, is telling him this, this um, wonderful information. And looking back at hexagram 40, yeah, he's told the energy is beginning to move out of the sphere of danger, just as a thunderstorm clears the air of tensions, 
And then in the hexagram 64, he's told this indicates a time when the transition from disorder to order is not yet completed, but the changes are indeed prepared for. It presents a parallel to spring, which leads out of winter stagnation into the fruitful time of summer. The conditions are difficult, task is great and full of responsibility, but is a task that promises success. You know, I mean, you have to imagine how encouraging that is uh, to be told that from where. That to me is kind of a miracle. And um, then he began a series, a beautiful series of dreams related to the second phase of the journey uh, having had St. Jerome's guidance through the first phase, which was associated with the niche in the West. Mm. So hang on here. There we are. Um, so these dreams are located in St. Jerome's second niche in the spiral descent and connected with the South, the ram realm of emotion. So a fundamental transformation happens in Dave's dreams and the psyche with the help of a female guide surrounded by a pale, numinous light who turns out to be another guise for Our Lady of Tears. Over a seven-week period, Dave is guided through seven chambers of a desert tower of prayer containing different forms of goddess energy. Each chamber has its own patterns, colors, and association to jazz and pop music. Dave had a vast music collection and often brought in CDs he burned of the songs in his dreams. The prayer chambers are in ascending order, clockwise, spiral order, beginning with a prayer of ice, uh, followed by rain, flood, fate, wings, wind, and flight. The psychological metaphors go from frozen water to rain from above to flooding, then a transition to a more spiritual, lighter domain, beginning with fate, then wings, which ride and manipulate the wind to flight. As he travels through the chambers, he is told to remember the agate. Uh, remember, he is told to remember the agate, that the prayers are all to be to directed to Our Lady of Tears, and that all this occurs in St. Jerome's second niche, that is the alchemical vessel, containing the ocean, black rock, cactus, and temple of Asclepius, which you see on the screen here in the south. The women in the chambers, he is told, are not to be confused with the women in his life. In other words, they are goddesses. At one point, he is told to use active imagination several times each week, in the transition from dream to waking, focusing on the emotional texture of the night's dream. The meaning of the tower is related to Prospero's rock and is in the anima's domain. The tower has a well below, think of the hexagram, the well, and is open to the sky. Engaging the anima figures in the well will heal Prospero's wounds and remove an isolation supported by his genius and wizardry. We agreed in discussing the dream that both Prospero and King Lear in Shakespeare's plays had animas that were controlled and or punished, quite different from Our Lady who is on par with Jesus. The guide says, quote, we hold the ocean in our heart, the seas we have left behind, end of quote, and, and the guide, this female guide tells him, on the feast days, we release our hair. Then she says, the first set of prayers, the prayers of ice, will be for, quote, taking back of the dream child, unquote, which would be the prostitute's abandoned boy. Dave comments, quote, the key to the first chamber is involved with the dream of Prospero, the West State Street Avenue, remember that was uh, where his high school band played and all the, the um, military men uh, would connect with prostitutes. Um, and the two women fighting over the baby in my recent dream. So six nights later, he wakes up from a dream 
of being in a very cold truck ride and enters an active ad, enters an active imagination while being half awake. Quote, I'm in the chamber of the prayer of ice. The woman who is praying places some of the red pulses on my poultice on my third chakra. And I feel the emotions which have been frozen for most of the week beginning to thaw, drawn to the surface by the warmth. The woman is wearing a robe which is silver and white with designs of icicles, end of quote. They are very beautiful and I associate them with the agates. Each is a moment of coldness, but each has its beauty and can be looked at. I hear the phrase, danger isn't death. So five days later, Dave dreams throughout the night he's in places where it is possible and necessary to make choices regarding what memories to deal with in what sequence. He is unable to remember the specific choices to make in each cycle. To reduce the complexity a bit, and in the interest of time, I will skip the prayer of rain and the prayer of fate chambers. Between the two chambers, he dreamt he was in a mountain town where everyone knits. Quote, two women are knitting brick red yarn in patterns that remind me of Yijing hexagrams, only they are knitting from the top downwards, end of quote. So 19, uh, 19 days after the choices dream, that was the one where uh, he was told to make choices regarding the memories to deal with in what sequence. So 19 days after that, he had a dream opening with high emotions about a political and sexual threat from men, a girlfriend, and feeling about the woman associated with the top line of the well hexagram. Quote, I'm aware of needing to not name the emotion as anger. I remember the agate and fo focus myself on thin slices of memory, concentrating on the emotional content of the memories. This refers to the need to not put too much energy into dealing with emotionally volatile material. So bear and pig are stirring the pot, and that's an image he often used to initiate active imagination in the first round of our analysis. Uh, they are working with materials in the alchemical vial, bringing the crucified boy on the cactus together with Prospero on the rock. This is connected to the prayer of the wings, and I remember an image of the rivers of the world, each contained in a globe on the goddess altar in the chamber of, of the prayer of flood, and that the conditions for the flood are present long before the waters. I think of the rhythms of Latin music, and then of the jumble of Miles Davis albums from the post Bitches Brew era. And I know that I am to listen to music and meditate on the emotional cross currents. So what is important here, I'll just add this, is that uh, we're talking uh, about dealing in the archetypal realm, he was told not to think of it as particular women in his life. So the goddesses are in the archetypal realm. And the other is what you do in therapy. You go into the particular emotions and experiences. You don't just talk generally about something, but you have to, the grist for the mill is in the particulars. And that is what is depicted um, imaginally as these different layers in that agate. 